Hi, and thanks for joining me for another Pastor's Connection as we go through the Word midweek together for a few minutes and gain insight from our Lord about life with Him. You know, it is the Christmas season, and so I'm uh, taking a look at different uh, Bible characters. The characters of Christmas, I call them people whose lives uh, come up in the biblical record of the birth of Christ. And we've taken a look at a number of them, Joseph and Mary as examples of that. And today, one you may not know that much about, Zechariah was his name, a common name found in many places in the Old Testament, who was one of the priests in Jerusalem, who ministered in the temple in Jerusalem, who was just another one of the hundreds of priests that lived and worked there until one afternoon when an angel met him in the holy place of the temple and his life took an unexpected turn. Zechariah, I would call him the one who encountered the unexpected. How he handled it wasn't the greatest, and there's a lesson for us there in in terms of how we handle the unexpected things that God's will brings to us. So, again, we take a look at the person. I'll tell you a little bit about them, uh, and then we take a look at a passage that touches on their life and reveals something, and then we put into words a principle that we can walk out of their life lessons with. So, um, Zechariah, the person, who was he? Well, Zechariah, like I said, was one of the hundreds of priests who were all in a rotation, and uh, every few weeks they would journey to Jerusalem to take part in their priestly duties of of bringing the sacrifices to the altar in the temple and bringing uh, the different offerings into place and ministering and meeting the people. And every once in a while, uh, one of those priests would be chosen by a drawing, a lot, literally, to go into um, the holy place, which was a, a part of the temple that that was farther away from the outer part, and it was considered holier. And there was a, a an altar there, a small altar that came up to about um, a man's chest, and there were coals on it. And the priest would pour incense onto the coals of that altar as a symbol of the prayers of the people. And when the incense would burn, it would come up in a beautiful, fragrant cloud which, which was a symbol of what the Bible says prayer of believers is like to God. It's a fragrant aroma to him. And it was to symbolize the prayers of Israel for God's help. So Zechariah was chosen by drawing to do that. And on that great day, he came in to, to do this. And he, as, he, as he stood in that holy place and he poured the, the incense onto the hot coals of that altar standing in front of him, as he expected... The, the incense turned into, into a smoke. It was very fragrant, and, and it kind of filled the interior of that small room. But as he didn't expect, an angel materialized out of that smoke. As the smoke cleared, he saw an angel of God standing clear as day in the holy place. And that angel told him that Zechariah and Elizabeth, who had never been able to have a child, he and his wife Elizabeth, never been able to have a child, now well on into, into the aged years of their life, he told him their prayers had been answered, and they would bear a son whose name would be called John, and he would be the forerunner of the Messiah who would be coming soon after John was born. The Messiah, of course, Yeshua, Jesus. And uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth were to have the great honor of, of, of raising John the Baptist, and then launching him into his ministry, but also have the ability to tell the people that an angel had appeared to, to Zechariah and that the Messiah was on his way. What a privilege. Every uh, religious man's dream in Israel. Well, Zechariah should have responded in awe and worship and wonder and obedience, but that's not what happened. He crashed and burned in his great moment of the unexpected and he doubted the angel and questioned the angel as to how this could be, since he was already old and couldn't father a child. And so he met his opportunity. Instead of with faith, he met it with unbelief. And boy, the price was swift and steep. The angel said, because you have doubted me, the angel who stands at the, in, the, in, in the throne room of God, he struck Zechariah dumb. He, 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 made him, he, he paralyzed his abilities to speak. And Zechariah was struck dumb throughout Elizabeth's pregnancy and the birth of their son until on the final day when John was named publicly their son, nine months, nine months, and some weeks later, then Zechariah's tongue was loosened and he was able to speak. And having learned his lesson, at that point he did praise God. 
But boy, what a missed opportunity as he encountered the unexpected. So that's the person, that's the story. A passage that captures it all. Well, you can read the whole story in the latter part of Luke chapter 1. But just two or three verses for you. And in his encounter with the angel, Luke 1.18 says, Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? <laughs> That's just not what you want to say when God tells you to take something by faith. How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And <laughs> Gabriel says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. So there was the opportunity, the unexpected, and the failure of faith. And I can relate to Zechariah because I've had numerous experiences of that, where God answered prayer, or God presented opportunity that was unexpected, and I faltered too. How about you? Well, I'm thankful that God is a God of redeeming and forgiving grace. Because later in Luke, just a couple more verses, when Zechariah had learned his nine-month-long silent lesson, and he had a chance to dedicate his son to the Lord, and they asked him, what shall the name of John be? He, he, uh, his tongue was immediately loosed, and he called him the name that the angel had given him. And then in Luke 1, 67, it says, And John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't it great? You can fail, but still later be filled again with the Holy Spirit. God will not abandon his children, even when we fail in unbelief and faltering. You can once again be filled. And he was used because it said, And he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. In other words, he made the great prophecy he should have made nine months before. Better late than never. And he did it on a moment to stay. And so he began to fulfill what God had told him to do, late but still better late than never. And God continued to bless him. So he lived in a lifetime of hope and faithfulness and service and prayer, and he was praying for a child but never got one. Then he's unexpectedly given an answer to prayer that not only is he going to have a son, that son will be the one who announces the arrival of Jesus to the world. But because he wasn't ready to get his face stretched, he brought the wrong response and experienced personal loss. So when he encountered the unexpected, I'm sure Zechariah would look back, and maybe he even told people in the later years of his life, listen, if you encounter the unexpected from God, don't answer him like I did, saying, how can this be? Here's a better answer. Well, Lord, this is not what I expected, but you're the boss. Lead on. How many times Zechariah looked back and wished he'd said that? So what's our principle? I put it in these words. When God answers your prayers in an unexpected way, go with it. There's a blessing waiting for you. When God answers your prayers in an unexpected way, go with it. There's a blessing waiting for you. There was a great blessing waiting for Zechariah, but he didn't take it. And he lost it for nine months of time. The unexpected should always be greeted by, Lord, this is what I was, wasn't what I was expecting, but you're the boss. Go with it. I'll go with you. So I don't know. It's the end of the year in this Christmas season, like I've mentioned in, in previous uh, editions of the Pastor's Connection this month. And it's a time when we're closing a year and starting another. And uh, as you're looking at the next year, maybe there's some unexpected things that, that you're going to face. Maybe you'll find that something happens on your job that is not what you expected and hoped for. You're going to have a chance to say, Lord, this wasn't what I was expecting, but I'm going to go with it because you're the boss. Maybe relationships in your family or in other areas of life will take a turn that you didn't expect that's difficult. Try and remind yourself of Zechariah's lesson. Lord, this, this isn't what I expected, but you're the boss. I'm going to go with it and go with you. Whatever realm of life it might be. Hey, our physical health is always an unknown, isn't it? Maybe this coming year the Lord will give you a physical challenge. And you're going to have the opportunity to say, Lord, this isn't what I expected, but you're the boss. I'm going to go, go with it. I'm going to go with you into this. 
I, I tell you, I think there's going to be a blessing there for you. There was a blessing there waiting for Zechariah. He got it late, but he still got it because that's the way our Lord is. May the Lord bless you today and lead you to walk with him no matter the unexpected. God bless, and I'll check in with you next week.